Janos are here. In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how the NEAT video filter can remove noise from video, improving output quality for all outputs. Shooting in low light conditions is a reality for most of us. A few weeks ago, I shot Democratic congressional candidate Anthony Flacavento at a local incubator facility, and as you can see, when I play the video, there's lots of noise. Back here, and even on the candidate's face. Fortunately, this type of noise, the, uh, the regular gain-related noise, uh, is, is exactly what the NEAT video filter was designed to correct. So let's apply the filter. Uh, by way of background, the filter, which you can find by Googling NEAT video filter, costs about 100 bucks, and you apply it just like any other filter. So you apply it to the clip, and then let me scoot this over a bit so you can see it. Then you click the settings button, which is going to bring us to a full screen view that I will quickly correct. Let me show the frame. Now, if you've worked with video that you've created a profile with before, you click here and then load the profile. And this is the first time I've worked with this video. So I will click auto profile. What happens here is that the filter goes and looks for an area that's flat and you know has little detail and that is a region where it's easy to tell uh, whether interframe changes are noise or whether they are true motion in the frame so looking at this video here it's fairly easy to say that uh, there's no motion going on here that's true motion all the motion relates to noise and that's something the filter will attempt to eliminate now the key factor here is to make sure that the quality setting is over 60 as long as it's over 60 you've got good a good basis to work with. If you don't have a flat region in the video, that would be for all your video is something like this, then you'll have to set some of the original noise related settings manually. And I'll show you what, what those look like in a few seconds. So put this back. We've got our quality setting of 89. And now it's time to fine tune the, uh, the, the settings. Basically what we've done here is determine you know, what is the amount of noise? Now we've got to set some, some other settings in the filter. To do that, you click over here in the noise filter settings. And then we can see here's the noise levels, and this is what was automatically set by the device noise profile that we selected a moment ago. And then since, since we found a flat region, we're going to adjust the noise reduction amounts and the sharpening amounts. Um, if you didn't have a flat region, you'd have to adjust these manually. So we're in good shape because we found a flat region. The next thing I would do here is I would see if there's a preset that I want to use. So you click the clip preset drop down list and you see several advanced presets here. Some of them handle pretty specific instances like, you know, if you've got out of focus video, if you've got thin lines, you know, this is basically an issue where we've got to filter a bunch because we shot in the light. And whenever you filter a bunch, you want to also sharpen because filtering can blur some details. Okay, so here's our video. Once you're in this mode, you can enable and disable preview. Helps a lot to be in full frame mode. Here is the original video and here's after applying the filter. So we've got the filter and sharpen, and we don't have to adjust the noise levels, as I said, because we were able to find a flat region and the filter auto-calculated those. So we might want to mess a bit with the noise reduction amounts, how much of the noise is actually eliminated, and the sharpening results. Now we are already seeing that the filter is reducing the noise 100% in these three spatial frequencies, high, mid, and low. Um, it's reducing only 60% of the noise in the Y channel, which is necessary to avoid a plastic type look for, for the subjects. So I'm not going to mess with the noise reduction settings here. What I am going to look at is sharpening. And there's a couple of views that are really, really useful for that. And scrolling down here, you can show the video and the channels. So this is Y, this is CB, this is CR, and this is the original. Let me adjust this a bit to give us a bit more useful view. Put this over here, put this over here, and then go back into the... Okay, so now we've got a bit of the face and we've got a bit of the background as well. Now, the sharpening options that I chose, the preset, filter and sharpen, sharpened only in the Y channel, not the CR and the CB, and that's kind of the conservative uh, view. So, I want to see, well, you know, can I get a little bit sharper video if I adjust these manually? And the best view for that is in the Y channel, 
This is what the Y channel looks like, and I can adjust the spatial frequency of the noise in all three of these channels. So this is the high, low, and mid. Now, whenever you're adjusting the sharpening setting, you want to see if you can increase sharpness without increasing um, artifacts in the background. So if we push this, we see in the high, we're not getting much of a much of a difference. We're not creating an artifacts back here that aren't already there, and we're not um, we're not making it look much sharper. In the mid, which is here, let's take a look. So we push this, we can see the adjustment occurring in the mid here, and I'm not seeing any artifacts back here. So this adjustment looks to be pretty good. You know, so if we're all here, you know, basically we're seeing the sharpness in the face and not in the background, which is what you want. And then the low, same thing. We're getting a sharper image and we're not creating any additional noise here. Now I'd want to take a look at that in normal mode and make sure we're not creating any halo type artifacts or anything like that. So we are seeing a little bit of haloing back here. Let's see if that goes away if we drop this off. And it does a little bit, so that's something you want to watch for. But you also see that the face is getting sharper. So everything's a balance when it comes to filtering. You've got to make your own decisions. This looks pretty decent to me. And once I've chosen my sharpening settings, noise reduction settings, then I'm going to click Apply. And now I'm going to work with the temporal settings in the effect controls view itself. So there's three settings here. The first setting for temporal filter radius determines how many frames the filter is applied over. And at a setting of one, the filter is applied over three frames. The frame immediately preceding this one, this one, and the next one. So basically, rather than applying the anti-noise setting to each individual frame, it's going to look at three frames to figure out what is noise and what is true motion. And then if you bounce that up to a the maximum setting, which is five, it's applying the filter to four frames before, four frames after. And the benefit is you get a truer picture of what noise is as opposed to true motion. Uh, and the downside, of course, is going to be uh, encoding time. It's going to take a lot longer to process each frame if you've got to consider both four frames before and four frames after. The temporal filter threshold basically adjusts how the filter distinguishes noise from true motion, and I typically leave that at the default of 100. And then adaptive filtration basically asks the question, do you want the filter to adjust its settings uh, for different scenes in the video? Now in this particular video, there's no changes in settings. This is you know, the candidate talking, the candidate talking, so I'm going to leave it at zero. If I was using this on multiple scenes, or on a sequence with multiple scenes, then I would set this at one, and then it would adapt the filtration technique based upon the setting. Once you've got the filter configured, basically you just render as normal and you're all set. Now let's take a look at some results of the filter. And what I did is I created, I created this file here, and I've got, you know, the, I put the clip twice on the timeline, cropped them out so I could show both of them side by side, applied the filter on, uh, on this side, didn't apply the filter on this side. And then I rendered out to various, uh, to various output formats. So the first one we're going to look at is DVD. I know not a lot of us are producing DVDs that frequently, but I think this is useful. This is a very high quality output. And even when it's still, you see a lot more noise back here than you do here. You see the shirt looks clearer and even brighter than it does here. And of course, if you play it back, you'll see much more noise in the background and in the face on this side than you do over here. Practices of the corporations or the policy of the... So that's, a, you know, that's eight megabits per second. That's a pretty high quality uh, output. Let's take a look at a lower quality output. This is 720p at about 2.8 megabits per second, which is what ESPN uses. Uh, for their 720p rendering. And again, we see a lot more noise back here. We see noise in the face, much clearer over here. This uh, shirt looks a bit brownish. Here it looks clearer, uh, you know, a little bit whiter, and it looks obviously sharper. And if we play the video... Our problems is always to be found in private... And we see a lot more artifacting back here than we do here. You're always going to have artifacting with a flat background, but uh, the noise in the background really accentuates that, and you don't see that over here. 
And the last use case we're going to look at is uploading to YouTube. So I rendered the project from Premiere at 720p at about 14 megabits per second, very high quality rendition. Then I sent it up to YouTube and YouTube created the normal versions that it does. So if we look at the 720p version in the uh, larger player, again, even without playing it, we see a lot more artifacting back here than we do here. And we see a lot more noise in the face than we do here. So if I click and during real time playback, we see a lot more noise back here than we do here. Now, I don't know how well this is going to show up on the iteration that you're looking at. Um, but if you go to the website for Streaming Media Producer, there's an article around this tutorial and the article will have links to this YouTube videos and maybe a couple of the others that I produced. Bottom line is, if you have noisy video from shooting in low light conditions, and, and hey, who doesn't, uh, check out the neat video filter. It can significantly increase quality for all output types. I'm Jan Ozer. Thanks for watching.